This video is sponsored by Fabulous, the habit building and coaching app. The human heart is an incredible organ. It can pump 1.5 gallons of blood in one minute, beat up to 35 million times a year, and is practically impervious to cancer because heart cells don't replicate. But like all things, the heart has its limits. One of those limits is how fast it can beat. It's not something you really think about. You figure you exercise or take stimulants and your heart beats faster. You'd assume if you did more of this, your heart would just beat faster indefinitely. But no, there are limits. All right, there's a lot to unpack here, so I'll just jump to the ad. Fabulous is a habit building and coaching app that breaks down healthy habits into small tasks that you can easily complete every day. Their techniques are backed by decades of scientific research. There's two approaches to using this app, self-guided for habit building and guided for habit coaching. Everyone has different needs, so Fabulous gives you the option to choose which approach is right for you. For myself, I'm trying to improve my focus and productivity. I used to use a list on my computer to keep track of different tasks. But with Fabulous, I started writing my list down in a notebook, per their suggestion, and that's been working better than my digital solution. It's also helping me prioritize tasks in a way that gets them done. I can also opt out of getting reminders so I can go at my own pace. Fabulous makes it easy for anyone to develop and stick to healthy habits, thanks to science-backed routines. As a result, you'll feel healthier, accomplished, and more productive. Start building your ideal daily routine today. The first 100 people who click on the link in the description will get 25% off their fabulous purchase. To understand how fast a human heart can beat, we first have to look at how a heartbeat works. Your heart is a mass of cardiac muscles hollow chambers, and conductive fibers. Cardiac muscle, like all skeletal muscle in the body, contracts due to electrical signaling. You want to grab an apple. The nervous system sends an impulse to the muscles in your hand, causing them to contract. And voila. Also, pro-life tip, this is why when you get electrocuted, you cannot let go of the source that's shocking you, because your muscles are contracting. Unlike your skeletal muscles, which receive impulses from the brain through the nervous system, your heart has its own electrical network which is why it can keep beating outside the body. Here's how the heart's electrical system produces a heartbeat. An electrical stimulus is first generated at the sinoatrial node or SA node at the top of the heart. The signal moves down to the AV node and follows the conductive fibers into four different chambers of the heart, called the right and left atrium and the right and left ventricles. While the signal is traveling down the fibers, these chambers fill with blood. The atrium fills first. The signal then reaches the atriums causing cardiac muscle to contract, forcing blood into the ventricles. The signal then reaches the ventricles, causing them to contract, pumping blood into the lungs and the body. When this whole cycle has gone through once, it counts as a single heartbeat. It looks and sounds like this. The rate at which a heart can beat is limited by the heart's own electrical system. But why? Well, what's actually happening when the electrical signal travels down the cardiac fibers is it's causing sodium channels on the cell to open. Sodium ions rush into the cell, generating an action potential, which delivers a stimulus to the cell next to it, opening its sodium channels, causing sodium to rush in, making another action potential on the next cell. This continues on until the electrical stimulus reaches the muscle, causing a contraction. Once sodium ions are inside the cardiac cell, any additional electric stimuli, no matter what, will not be able to cause an action potential on the cell until the sodium ions are pumped out. So while there's still sodium in here, no muscle contraction of the heart can occur. Once the cell is reset and sodium is pumped out, the stimulus can then cause another action potential and therefore a heart contraction. This reset period is called the absolute refractory period and is what limits how fast your heart can beat. It's a physiological limit that ensures your heart doesn't beat so fast that it kills you. With this reset mechanism in place, what's the maximum rate your heart can beat? Well, cardiologists seem to agree that roughly 210 beats per minute is a likely sustainable limit. But then again, this is purely theoretical. In fact, you can calculate your own theoretical maximum heart rate, which is heavily dependent on your age. As you grow older, your heart becomes less efficient in responding to electrical signals, and therefore you will have a lower max heart rate. To calculate it, it's 210 beats per minute minus your age. So for me, my theoretical max heart rate is 210 minus 30, which puts me at about 180 beats per minute. As for my wife, because she never ages and therefore is still 25, her theoretical maximum heart rate is 185 beats per minute. Your max heart rate is limited by this physiological mechanism, which is good. Like all proper biological functions, when it works the way it's supposed to, your body functions the way it should. But say there was a defect in a biological function that caused the system to operate in a different way. My brain. 
For the heart, what if there was a defect where there was an extra conductive fiber that connected the upper heart to the ventricles? That would mean that there's an extra pathway for electrical signals to reach the ventricles that shouldn't be there. Well, that's exactly what happens. This extra nerve fiber is called an accessory pathway and is actually a congenital birth defect known as Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome and occurs in 0.2% of the population. What's harmful about this accessory pathway is it can cause abnormally high heartbeats known as tachycardia, well above the theoretical 210 beats per minute. When the SA node sends an electrical signal to the AV node, this accessory pathway conducts part of the signal and it reaches the ventricles before the normal signal does. This causes the ventricle to contract before it's supposed to. Then the regular signal reaches the ventricle and it contracts again. This birth defect bypasses the absolute refractory period allowing the heart to have a much higher limit of how fast it can beat. And as Dr. Emmett Brown said, When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. With accessory pathways, heart rates have been documented to reach as high as 300 beats per minute. You'd think a condition like this would be impossible to live with as the heart would just beat out of control on a daily basis. Oddly enough, that's not the case. Most people who have this birth defect live normal lives because the condition doesn't manifest until later in life. Some may never have an issue at all. However, there are exceptions. One famous case involved a 10-year-old named Jack Searle from Cambridge, England in 2018. Searle had been born with an accessory pathway in his heart, but it never manifested as a problem. Then one day at school, he noticed his heart began to race for no reason. Throughout the day, his heart rate increased more and more, causing him to become severely exhausted and his skin to turn gray due to lack of blood circulation. Searle was rushed to the hospital where his heart rate was clocked at a staggering 310 beats per minute, which sounds like this. Doctors noted that had he not been in the hospital in time, he would have likely died. Surgeons were able to save Searle's life by physically extracting the accessory nerve in his heart. It turns out surgical removal is the most common solution to accessory pathways. Either that or a pacemaker has to be installed to regulate the electrical signaling of the heart. Now you might be thinking having an incredibly fast heart rate would be good, kind of like a superpower. In theory, you'd be able to breathe and run faster since your heart is pumping more blood, right? Well, it's quite the opposite. The heart is pumping so fast that almost no blood is getting into the chambers. Normally, the heart needs to fill with blood in between beats. Sure, we're talking microseconds, but each microsecond counts. The faster your heart rate, the less time there is for blood to get in. Eventually, somewhere around 220 beats per minute, your heart reaches a rate that the chambers open and close so fast that no blood gets in. If no blood is getting into the heart, firstly, you'll faint from lack of oxygen. Secondly, your heart isn't getting any oxygen either, and so the tissues become hypoxic. Heart tissue begins to die, and the heart itself goes into heart failure. It's not a superpower, but a fatal weakness. So, with empirical evidence, we can say the upper limit of the human heart rate is 310 beats per minute. However, if you're the I want to know the absolute fastest on record in history ever type of person, then the fastest in history is 480 beats per minute or 8 beats per second and sounds like this. This specific case was documented in the year 2000 in the Journal of American Cardiology. The heartbeat originated from a human fetus, likely with an accessory pathway deformity. A human fetus has a much higher resting heart rate than a full-grown adult, which explains why 480 beats per minute was achievable. This brings us to the last question. Can your heart beat so fast that it explodes? No, the heart doesn't explode. Muscle fibers don't erupt like a pressurized balloon. Instead, cardiac tissue could become severely strained and damaged, like any overworked muscle. It's possible if the heart is in tachycardia for too long, muscle fibers could be fatigued to the point of malfunction, which can lead to blood clots and overall less efficiency of the heart. So yeah, that's the video. Uh, thanks for watching.